afternoon once again. Thank you so much for joining us today. I just wanted to uh, introduce us here. Uh, myself, that's Don Stephanie. I'm the channel manager here at VoIP Supply. And presenting the Sangoma portion of today's, today's webinar will be Todd Milbrand, the channel manager from Sangoma. So before we start, just want to let you know that during the presentation, if you want to ask any questions, feel free to do that via the chat function. Uh, to keep the chaos to a minimum, we've got you all muted on the, on the speaking side of things, but feel free to fire your questions over in chat. We'll, we'll try to have those answered. And, uh, you know, look forward to hearing from you on that and keep it, you know, maybe interactive if we can. And you know VoIP Supply for the hardware. Uh, since 2002, VoIP Supply has been delivering hardware to over 20, 125,000 customers worldwide. It includes thousands of reseller partners such as yourselves. And this program that we're talking about today is really what we design our focus on. So we're here to talk to you a little bit about that, our partner program here at VoIP Supply. So the hardware side of the house, as you know, uh, we feature over 60 manufacturers and offer over 16,000 products including everything that you can think of from the CPE set standpoint, phones, ATAs, all from your most popular manufacturers, PBX hardware, and of course today with Sangoma in the house, we should really focus on that PBX from Sangoma. We can deliver you that free PBX or the PB Exact uh, on hardware on-prem, so we can help you out with that. So we'll talk more about that uh, after this webinar and our follow-ups as well. We also can bring the IP paging gear, gateways, session border controllers, networking switches, and headsets and other accessories that you need to go along with those phones and, of course, uh, any other devices that you need from us to, to make your solution complete. We also have the CloudSpan Marketplace, which we're here to talk about a lot today as well. Sangoma is featured there. And uh, the PBX at Cloud is part of that as well, and we're going to bring you that on a future webinar. Uh, today we're going to mostly focus on SIP station and fax station. I'm going to talk about fulfillment here very briefly, a program that's near and dear to my heart. If you're a service provider out there, uh, we do the programming and provisioning of products, as well as packaging, custom labeling, drop shipping, products ready to go right to your end clients for you. So feel free to reach out to me on that anytime. I'd love to talk to you about that as well after the webinar. Also, Refresh and Reclaim is part of our partner program. Uh, whether units are coming off rental from your clients or your clients need upgrades, we can help you maybe offer a buyback on gear that's already out there in the field, uh, but we put those that gear back through a 10-step refresh process, get them back to like new condition so you can send them out to your clients again at a great lower cost option when needed. Uh, this is the partner portal. It's just a static of our partner por portal page. I'm not going to spend too much time here. Um, after the show, we'll make sure that all of our reseller partners that are here today and that, that uh, we send out invites to are, have access to this portal. Here, um, we've always said at VoIP Supply that we're everything you need for VoIP, and now we can pretty much, you know, cash that check. Um, we're going to help you here. Everything you need, hardware, software, VoIP service, which we're going to focus on today with Sangoma, fulfillment and refresh, as we talked about in the previous slide. So everything you need to sell VoIP now, we're going to have that here in the portal and featured for you. So we're going to empower you to bring the solutions to the market right to your clients. Also, and you know, it's focusing on the feature today with Sangoma, um, on, on this feature today, this is a marketplace where we can bring you um, multiple providers to bring hosted solutions out to your clients, help you sell them quickly and easily, and uh, with no quotas, no commit levels, hardware and services all in one place um, to bring you, you know, the, the best in class commissions, SPIFs and incentives, and, uh, and we can help you do that through the marketplace, also part of our partner program. So. That's something that uh, the, the SIP station and FAC station are a part of and, and a big part of that. So Sangoma we're featuring today. Um, so I, I encourage you to take advantage of that, leverage us, and we'll help you get out there, train you up, get you educated on the product so you're super comfortable selling it, and help you bring that recurring revenue home. With that said, I am actually going to turn this over to Todd Milbrand from Sangoma. Thanks, Don. Um, so again, my name is Todd Milbrand. I'm with uh, Sangoma. Uh, Going to go over uh, two of our products today, SIP Station and uh, Fax Station. Uh, on the agenda, just want to spend uh, 30 seconds or so going over who Sangoma is. Uh, as much as I want to believe everyone knows who Sangoma is, that's not always the case. Uh, so we're going to do a quick introduction on who we are, what we do. Uh, going to go over SIP trunking. Not going to get too technical or in the weeds. Um, I realize everyone on this uh, particular call is a reseller. Um, 
it's, but even with that being said, I'm not going to make the assumption everybody knows what SIP trunking is, just going to cover basics there. Uh, we're going to compare how our solution uh, prices out when looked at other solutions. Uh, we're also going to go over some highlights on uh, what makes us different. Um, and to wrap up the uh, SIP station part, uh, things to consider uh, when looking at making the move for either yourself or your end users. Uh, in the back half of this, we're going to go over fax station. Uh, it's our solution to ensuring 100% uh, reliable uh, faxing, the uh, technology that's just never going to go away. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how do you make money, because as, as a partner, that's probably uh, you know, 1A, 1B with uh, how easy is it to uh, set up and install and how little problems does it give me. So we're going to go over that and then we'll open up things to, uh, to a Q&A. So really quick, who, who's saying Goma? Uh, we're, we're a publicly traded company uh, on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Our corporate headquarters is, is based out of Toronto. We've got offices across the U.S. and the U.K., India, Australia. Uh, we truly are a global company. Uh, we've got about 150 folks spread out worldwide, uh, and we are focused solely on telecom and telephony products. It's our bread and butter. It's the only thing we do. And it's uh, what we've done since the, the very beginning. In the beginning, back in the 80s, uh, we used to make cards. We still do make these cards. Uh, that go into servers, go into appliances, and the, they allow you to interface with the PSTN, with analog devices, with uh, T1s. Um, and that was the majority of what we did up until uh, about the early 2000s. Um, and that's when we realized that trunking voice over IP was going to practically eliminate the need for these cards. Um, we do still make these cards. Um, these cards go into all of our servers, uh, actually go into a lot of our uh, competitors on the uh, premise-based PBX side uh, servers. Um, but it's, it's now become a, a very small piece. You know, uh, the, the product portfolio has evolved to where we've got um, high-end carrier solutions uh, for SS7. Um, such and border controllers, uh, which can secure your network for real-time communications. Um, we're not going to go too much into that. Um, I will, towards the end, have a, a link to um, our events page on our website. Uh, we, we have a great webinar coming up later this week on uh, securing things uh, that you guys can jump on. But now we also have PBX with PB Exact and Free PBX. Uh, we have our own phones, we have our own uh, SIP service, which is one of the focuses of today, fax station as well as cloud. So we truly can be everything from A to Z, um, but we can also just be different pieces of that. Uh, and that's, that's certainly true of SIP station. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with uh, SIP trunking and are not familiar with just the way phone systems operate in general, just a, a real quick overview here. Uh, since probably about the, the 80s, you know, if you're wondering how when you call your friend at work, uh, you call into the phone system, you hear a greeting and you put in their extension, or they've got a direct number, they work at a, a big corporation, um, you know, they don't, they don't have thousands of phone lines coming in run individually to the desk. Uh, they have all that stuff coming into the PBX. And the PBX acts um, almost like a switch to kind of route things to where they need to be. And uh, over the years, it's typically been the standard analog phone line you're used to from your house. In uh, large organizations, that's a T1. Uh, towards the late 90s, early 2000s, things started to switch uh, over to IP-based. Um, ironically, since about the 80s, it, it, things had been IP-based on the back end, even though we were seeing analog lines and T1s, AT&T, Verizon was already converting uh, their network over to VoIP on the back end. Um, and initially, in the early 2000s, you know, the big reason to switch to voice over IP or to uh, SIP trunking was cost savings. And uh, unfortunately, at that time, 
uh, bandwidth was not as ubiquitous as it is now. So I'm sure I'm not going to pick on any competitors, uh, but you know, all of us have a relative, probably an older person, that went with a, a well-known VoIP provider probably in the mid-2000s to make uh, lower cost calls to grandchildren overseas or across the country. And uh, we've probably all heard stories about it, it sounded like crap. Uh, well, the reason it sounded like crap is because everybody had like one meg connections, which we thought were super fast at that time, uh, but you know, they certainly weren't. Um, but now that we live in this day and age of ubiquitous uh, bandwidth, um, Voice over IP, SIP trunking done correctly actually sounds better than that old legacy telephone network. Um, so you can really leverage, you know, what you're already paying for um, as far as what's coming in for internet, get better sounding phone calls, as well as flexibility. Um, so, you know, on this slide we can see coming into the PBX, we don't have uh, those legacy lines here on this diagram. We've got everything going into uh, the cloud, the, the term everyone is sick of hearing. Um, but uh, everything coming from the cloud going into the uh, phone system. And uh, one of the things you can do as far as it relates to flexibility is if that internet connection goes down, you can use a provider such as us with SIP station uh, to make it so that those calls route to another phone system, they route to another geographical location, uh, they route directly to people's uh, cell phones. So people calling into your business uh, or to your customer's business aren't going to hear a busy signal or just hear ringing end endlessly. So going back to the us of Sangoma can do everything from A to Z. Um, just wanted to uh, have a slide here showing all that. So it's just like this, this previous slide. So up here we've got the awesome Sangoma phones, which uh, can be talked about in another time. One of our phone systems and everything going out over the internet and being powered by SIP station. So I hate talking about price as it relates to, to voice. You know, you, you'll see our, our pricing is, is super competitive. I, I feel like we've reached the, the point in the market where uh, price shouldn't be the uh, main consideration. Um, but it typically ends to be, it typically ends up being the first consideration. So I just want to show a couple scenarios here, especially uh, if you've got folks that are still using legacy stuff. Um, you know, what we've got here is a, a typical PBX, uh, and actually up here uh, using one of our PBXs. Um, you don't have to use SIP station with our uh, solution. You can use one of our cards or a gateways. Uh, now we're going a little light here at fifty dollars a month. Um, I'm starting to see stuff from AT&T and Verizon that's upwards of seventy, ninety dollars a month. Uh, now we're saying for three lines, you know, approximately eight to ten extensions. You know, that person's probably looking at one hundred fifty bucks a month. If we do the same exact thing with SIP station uh, with no contract, uh, which is a, a nice selling point uh, of our solution. You're not tied into anything uh, if you decide to go that route. Uh, 25 bucks a month, $75 a month, you're looking at 50% savings. And going back to what I said earlier, probably going to have a better sounding phone call as well. Um, we talked about T1s being a, another one of those uh, legacy type connections into a phone system. Uh, typically, a business, even if they only need 10 lines, uh, is going to go with a T1 just from a, a price perspective. Anything over eight uh, really doesn't uh, scale well, and a T1 makes more sense. So in this solution, um, or in this uh, example, my apologies, uh, they were actually going to do 10 lines. They'd be looking at, we're saying, 500 bucks a month. Uh, if they go T1 for that cost savings, it's 400. And uh, with our solution, with this station, no contract, you know, they're looking at 250, which is anywhere from a 35 to 50% uh, savings, depending on the scenario. Now, one thing the PSTN uh, has never been able to do is uh, trunk consolidation. So if you've got a, a customer with uh, more than one location, you have more than one location, 
you have to scope things out and you need to choose things as far as capacity coming into the phone system based on what you think the highest amount is that may ever happen. So you may typically only have, let's say, one phone call coming into branch one, but once a month that spikes up to three and you don't want people to, to get a busy signal. You don't want to, especially if that branch is a sales branch, so you're paying for three. And, you know, you're doing that across all of your branches and that adds up. Um, with us, um, this is something unique to us. I'm not aware of any other SIP providers that uh, can do this. Um, I'm sure if I'm wrong, uh, the uh, question portion of this uh, webinar is going to blow up, letting me know that I'm wrong. Um, but as far as I'm aware, we're the only ones that do this, where you can share capacity between locations. Um, so for branch one, where it might spike up to three once a month, branch two, where it might spike up to three, and then you got your main site, you can uh, drill all of this down to 12 call paths and share capacity, which means you can have, in this scenario, 10 calls coming into the main system, one coming into branch one, and one coming into branch two. You can flip that, reverse it, divide it up, uh, but it's a shared resource. So we're gonna move on. I just want to hit on some highlights with SIP station. Um, after this slide, I'll actually log in and show you guys some stuff within the portal. Uh, at the end of the day, the solution is $24.99 per month per trunk. And when I'm talking trunk, I'm talking capacity coming into the system. So if I have five trunks coming into my phone system, that means I can have five calls either coming in or out uh, at simultaneous time. Each one of those trunks is going to include 3,000 minutes. So in a, a five trunk scenario, we're looking at 15,000 minutes uh, that I can use throughout the U.S. and Canada. Uh, those are going to come with E911 e numbers. Uh, it comes with one. Uh, if you need additional numbers, we can uh, support that. Uh, we can get you local DIDs almost anywhere in the U.S. Um, can you keep your number? Can your client keep your number? 99% uh, of the time, yes. Uh, you know, if you live in a, a, a rural area, um, Due to some laws from the 90s, uh, probably can't port that number, uh, but we can always look into that for you. Um, after I go into the, uh, the substation portal here in a moment, we're going to talk about contracts, but everything I've talked about thus far, thus far uh, at $24.99 a month, uh, that's at no contract. So that means you can cancel at any time for whatever reason. You can always get a free 21-day trial if you're looking to try out our service and test things. And then uh, another uh, big feature with us is bursting. So you may be looking at this and go, well, what if I need one line, but I need more than 3,000 minutes? What if I go over those 3,000 minutes? Uh, well, typically we give you a little bit of a buffer. You know, if you, if you get to 3,000 in one minute, you know, there's no issue. I don't even think we charge for that. It's not worth our time. Uh, but if you're going to go over that, uh, we have something called soft cap bursting, where you can prepay a certain amount, and if needed, based on what type of call it is. Uh, if it's inbound, I think it's 1.9 cents a minute. If it's outbound, it's 2.9 cents a minute. Uh, we'll pull from that prepaid charge uh, to cover it. Uh, but there's another type of bursting that people are more interested in. You know, we talked about being concerned whether or not you have capacity, right? So I have three three lines. What if a fourth call comes in? What if I need to call someone and I need that fourth line? I don't want a busy signal or to hear all routes are congested. Uh, with concurrency bursting, um, you can prepay again, and I'm going to show that uh, portion to you once we uh, log into uh, the SIP station piece here. Uh, and you can pay per cent. Uh, or I'm sorry, per minute, uh, same charges as before, uh, to have that capacity. All right, so I'm going to move over here to I'm gonna get logged in. Uh, Don, do we have any questions while I'm logging in? We do, sir, we do. 
um, quickly, uh, a quick question did come up for um, the pricing for the numbers and cost for toll-free service through the substation. Perfect. I happen to be on the right screen. So right now I am at substation.com. Um, all of this is self-service. I mean, certainly, you know, if you need our help, we're here to help. Um, you know, but we, we live in a day and age where everybody wants to, they don't want to wait on other folks. You don't want to wait on, you know, your other provider to find numbers for you or do this. Um, you come here, you, you can log in as a new customer or if you're a reseller, partner of ours, log in here, get your clients set up uh, and have their trunk set up in the Sangoma PB Exact or free PBX system in a matter of minutes. Uh, so, DID numbers here, the first thing you choose, a dollar per month. And before I let you go on, I want to make sure we hit the other question I have here as well about the extensions reporting to the main telephone number. Are all the minutes exhausted from the trunk while the other call paths remain unused? So, pooling of minutes over the SIP trunks, I'm, I'm assuming. Pooling, yeah, they all, they all pool. So, it doesn't, if you have five trunks, it's 15,000 total. It doesn't matter which trunk it goes over. Perfect. I think we What's the question? Yeah, I and I didn't hit on the toll free. Uh, it's a dollar fifty per month and two point four cents a minute on every call in that. One thing to keep in mind with the uh, toll free: uh, any calls to the toll free number because it's being charged at two point four cents a minute does not count towards the number of lines that you have. So if you have five incoming trunks and an eight hundred number and fifteen calls come in on that eight hundred number, they're just going to come in. Um, and everything you're seeing here, I know this is partners, we're talking about money in a little bit and how you make that money. This is all MSRP. Um, but if I were to be setting this up for someone, I would come here, choose what I need as far as capacity. I'm going to ignore this fax piece here. This is fax station. We'll talk about it in a bit. I'll choose the number. Got it, you know, got to have at least one number with a trunk. I always suggest if you're going to be porting numbers over, if you're porting over four numbers, get four numbers with us now. Uh, make those temporary numbers, get everything set up, make sure the phone system's working in the uh, manner in which you want it to. You can quickly come here, select what you need, put it in your car, check out, and once you have verified everything, have a nice little key for you to put in your phone system to build out all of your routes and everything for you. I'm just going to log in real quick. Choose this one. I don't believe we have anything on it. So I'm just going to pop here under my account. Once everything is up and running, um, here we go. This is the key code you're going to get. You may have noticed we have these question marks everywhere. So you forget something, you can quickly access that info. You've always got our wiki for additional information. You can always call in. Uh, but this is the key code. You're going to put it in your phone system. It's going to register your trunks. It's going to build out your routes for you, and you're going to be done. Literally, however long it takes you to hit copy to clipboard and to paste it into the substation module in your phone system. If I uh, pop here under account configuration, this is where I can turn on some different items. Um, that soft cap bursting we were talking about, concurrency bursting. This is where I can turn that on for folks. Here's that top up I was talking about where, where you prepay for it. So let's just say you prepay $5 and don't use it. We're going to charge you $5 again in your ne next blank cycle, but you're also going to get a $5 credit. And then the following month, if you use four, $1, you're going to get a $4 credit, and then we're going to charge you $5 just to keep things uh, nice and clean from a, an accounting standpoint and so that you can see what's being used where and how. We've got international uh, fraud guard. So it's actually up to you to turn on in here the ability to make international phone calls. Um, we max it out uh, at $10 per week by default. 
Uh, so if you do have something happen, you're compromised, your customer's compromised, at the very least $10, or at the most, I'm sorry, at the most $10 is what gets used up. Um, if you've got a client that needs more than $10, that's fine. We can uh, override that. Um, but for security purposes, we make it so that when you log in, you cannot override it past $10. It's super easy to set up. Um, I mentioned there's no contracts. Um, did not mention any time you make a change. Again, going back to self-service, not having to wait on your provider to do this stuff for you. If you need to add an additional trunk, you come here, you add it, or you uh, go down, uh, whichever one uh, is going to work for you, you apply it, and in less than five minutes, that capacity is on your phone system. So you don't have to email someone, wait for the sales rep to do it, wait for it to go over to engineering, wait for this, wait for that. You come in here, you update it, you're done. Same thing with adding phone numbers and other items as well. All right, so we've been talking about $24.99 this whole time. And that's under no contract, which is how we've been operating uh, from the beginning of Substation. I think Substation's like eight or nine years old now. Um, coming October 1st, we're going to start offering contracts. And as part of that, as part of agreeing to a contract, uh, there's going to be discounts. So a 12-month contract, $21.99 per trunk, we're going to discount it some. Uh, there is a minimum of three trunks there. Um, we're not going to discount the other items like the IDs or E911 reporting. Uh, but the, the monthly trunk cost, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and we're going to uh, discount that to $21.99. Uh, you have to keep at least three trunks. Um, you can, can go higher, and uh, unlike other providers, going higher is not going to restart your contract date. On month six, if you want to go up to five, that's fine. You're still going to pay $21.99 per trunk, but you're now going to be at a capacity of five. Um, if you uh, want to go 36 months on a contract with us, we're going to go all the way down to $17.99 per trunk. And the same as uh, everything above here is uh, go going to apply. So minimum of three trunks, no discounts on the other items. So last piece uh, as we wrap up uh, SIP Station here, and I'll see if there's any questions related to SIP Station. Uh, the, the big uh, considerations when, when moving to uh, voice over IP. This first one, I'm just going to gloss over bandwidth. I'm sure you've all already thought, yes, you know, need to have bandwidth, need to have a good amount of bandwidth. Um, one thing people forget about, though, is the, the local area network. Uh, and luckily, you guys have VoIP supply here who can sell you uh, switches and other devices on your local area network uh, to ensure QoS if uh, needed or just to ensure capacity. Uh, but the, the more important thing is latency and jitter. Uh, with bandwidth being so ubiquitous, and I mean, I have 150 meg up and down connection at home. Like there's no, I, I have zero reason for that other than just it's cheap. Um, and also, my friends that don't have speeds, I get to send them speed test results and, and laugh at them. Uh, so that's nice. But there, there's no need for me to have 150, 150. And that's at home. And it, with businesses, it's, it's even more. Um, but we, we don't think about latency and jitter and how that affects call quality. Uh, and there are still parts of this country where all you can get is DSL. And DSL, unless you can look out um, your window and see that old Verizon building, or even probably touch it from reaching out your window, um, is an inherently high latency and high jitter connection. So even even though you may be able to get 2020, 5020 on DSL, I mean the the bandwidth piece keeps going up, and certainly there's more than enough bandwidth there to to support voice over IP. Uh, it's just an inherently a ton of latency and jitter, and that's going to affect your phone call 
today uh, a lot more than bandwidth, with bandwidth being everywhere. So uh, at that point, or at this point, I'm going to see if Don has any uh, questions for us. The only other question I, I think we have is a little bit about um, the failover side. I don't know if we talked too much about the SIP station failover capabilities. It's, I think, a feature set that uh, SIP station has that I think we should mention. Um, that is, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the contracts. That's really cool because that changes the price point if you have folks that can commit to that contract. Um, I think we were successfully um, selling SIP station at the at the at the top level pricing because of the extra features. One of them being uh, the failover options. So wanted to mention that. You know, obviously the bursting is awesome too, but again, the, the failover and, and with something mission critical like your phone system, I think it's important to show how SIP station handles that. Absolutely. Give me uh, one second here. Group. There we go. So this is where you can set up different options. So this is uh, different phone numbers. So if you've got a, a main phone number and you want to forward everything, let's say uh, you've got a main phone number coming into your Sangoma phone system with SIP station, and you've got a, another office in a different geographic location. They're not as fortunate as you guys to have a Sangoma phone system and SIP station. They've got, say, Avaya and AT&T. Uh, ooh, is right. But we can still forward those phone calls to the, that phone number uh, for AT&T, or that AT&T is providing. Um, and we can also go so far as we can fail over to an IP as well. So if you've got a, a backup Sangoma system somewhere, this is where you would do that. And you can also do a per DID failover which means if you call my direct number, it just goes to my cell phone in that situation. So let's, uh, let's move on over to SIP station. Uh, we've only got a couple more slides left. Uh, the SIP sta or, sorry, the fax station part uh, is not as uh, in-depth uh, as, SIP sta as SIP station. Uh, I want to start by just talking a little bit about how you can fax. Um, you know, fax just uh, it's never going to die. And since it's never going to die, um, you know, we're going to continue selling fax station and, and helping people uh, achieve 100% reliability. Uh, what you can do with the PSTN, so those regular phone lines, um, that works. It's always worked. It's what a fax machine was made for. Um, problem here is that those, the cost of those lines is going up significantly. Um, I, I've even heard in parts of Michigan, um, at and is charging over 100 bucks for that line and then charging per fax after that. Um, and then the other issue we have is, is Verizon and at and aren't investing in that network purposely because they don't want it to work. They want the federal government to uh, alleviate the, the burden on them of having to maintain that network. So, I mean, I, I talk to people all the time where just, you know, regular phone lines, anytime it rains, uh, they can't complete a phone call because their phone lines go down. Um, so, PSDN, it's there, works 100%, just as you probably are already experiencing, and part of why you probably jumped on this conference call and this webinar uh, was due to the cost of uh, going with the PSTN. So, what about SIP trunks? What about you know, you just showed us SIP station, talked about how great SIP station was. Why don't I use that for fax? It can be used for fax. You know, we have um, it built in. You might even have seen it when I was uh, in the SIP station portal, the ability to turn on T38, uh, which was a, a protocol that was developed to uh, allow for faxing over IP. In, in my experience, going back uh, 12, 13 years now, um, I have seen People tell me, look, I've got fiber, I've got nothing else on the network, I've got this, I've got that. Everything was done perfectly. I'm trying to send a two-page fax, it fails after half a page. And then on the flip side of that, I've had people tell me, look, I've got a point-to-point -point microwave uh, going one mile to a, a gateway and doing this and then going over Wi-Fi and I'm doing hundreds of pages. And that shouldn't work and it, it's working. Like there's like almost it's maddening how, I don't want to say undependable, but how you can do everything right and it still doesn't work. Um, so doing it with the trunks, you're going to have some sort of 
typically an analog gateway or the SIP trunks coming into the phone system. And if you want to hook up that fax machine, there's going to have to be an analog to digital conversion. Um, the reason it doesn't work 100% is uh, jitter, uh, latency on a network equals uh, those fax tones just failing the entire fax. So when you send something over the internet, even like real time, like voice, like this is going over, there's drop packets, things are showing up in different orders. Um, but the human brain has the, the capacity to just kind of stitch things together so you don't even realize it happened. Uh, the fax machine is such a, it is so temperamental that a couple of drop packets, a couple of things out of order, the whole thing just craps out. And you get your end users coming to you saying, I can't send a fax, this is frustrating, my customer can't send me a fax. So what, what about using the cable company? You know, everyone loves the, the cable company. Well, it's the same thing as uh, what we just talked about with uh, SIP trunks and T.38. Um, that fax machine you're plugging into the cable modem is just going SIP out over the internet. Um, there's still a digital to analog conversion. So while that cable modem that has those phone lines built in uh, is doing all the other 10 million things they put on it, being trying to be your firewall, trying to do this, trying to do that, you're now asking for a real-time digital to analog conversion and for it to work perfectly. Um, just like SIP trunks, uh, just like T.38, it doesn't work 100%, and there's no rhyme or reason as to why it doesn't. EFAX, uh, this actually does work 100%. Um, big issue here, uh, you can't connect to a fax machine, um, which there are still plenty of people that want their fax machine. There's also a, a bit of a learning curve for uh, non-technical users. Um, you know, having them try to, to figure out how to send things via their mail client or a portal. You know, so this fits for some businesses, uh, but uh, not the ones that still need a fax machine. So that was where we get to the point where I talk about the solution, which is our solution, fax station. Um, you can use a fax, you have a fax machine hooked up to it. Um, you can also do e-fax, so it's great for blended offices where some people still want to use that machine, others don't. Uh, the monthly cost, um, we're saving people tons of money compared to AT&T and Verizon and keeping that PSTN. Um, as you're going to see here in a moment, um, as far as the bandwidth is concerned, the latency, jitter, all that stuff we had to consider with SIP station doesn't matter with fax station. Uh, we actually developed this uh, for the oil industry. Uh, they wanted to be able to send faxes over satellites to uh, oil rigs in the middle of the ocean. And fax station uh, does that for them on a daily basis now. And uh, the best part is you can avoid T.38 compatibility issues. Um, I didn't talk too much, as much as I wanted to back on this slide about that, um, but uh, it happens all the time where someone has a fax machine over here that supports T.38, someone over here on the other side has one that supports T.38, but it's manufacturer specific, it's a different implementation of it. Um, so even though it was developed to uh, solve a lot of the issues, uh, as we move away from uh, an analog network, um, it doesn't. So how did we solve this issue? Well, what we did is we developed an appliance uh, that goes on site. Uh, it's only needed on site if you're going to have fax machines. Um, you can actually use our service just as an e-fax. Um, and it connects up to your fax machine. This uh, device can connect up to four. If you have more than four, you get another device. And any time a fax is sensor receive, received, the appliance acts as a fax machine. So if you're sending somebody a fax, it goes to the fax station appliance. Once it is fully there, the fax machine is happy because it knows that it was delivered, and we securely transfer it over to our data center. Once fully in our data center, it goes over uh, a completely analog network as far as we can take it 
Um, so our carrier, it is an analog from our data center off to wherever they hand it off to another uh, uh, another provider or carrier, uh, and then makes its way to the uh, fax machine that you're trying to deliver it to. Um, any fax you send through there will be stored in our cloud for as long, however long you want, uh, so that you can access it at another time. Uh, anything coming in, uh, the same thing. So fax, fax comes in. Once it's fully in our data center, we're going to transmit it to the fax station appliance. Once it is fully on there, the fax station appliance is going to act like a fax machine and send it to your fax machine. Uh, so that way we can ensure 100% uh, reliability on delivery of that. And then again, you're also going to uh, be able to access that uh, from our portal, which I'm going to log into real quick. Now, since it's all resellers on this call, um, one thing you can do with our portal, um, if you're in our program and you're selling this, you can actually white label it. So instead of fax.sipstation.com, um, we can point people to, or we can have things pointed to your domain. Uh, we can change all of this stuff. We can change the colors, this help button. Instead of going to wiki.freepbx.org, it goes to wiki.reselleronthephonecall.com or wherever you want it to go. If you want uh, your phone number on here for uh, support, things of that nature, we can have it on here. This is where I can quickly log in. I can manage my different devices. I can have two fax machines at a client site, uh, but have four phone numbers coming into the device and have two of those phone numbers routing to somebody's email address. The other two numbers route to, let's say, the fax machine. Anything sent in here will be there for viewing at a later date. So that way, uh, I mean, we've all heard that I never got that fax. Well, you know what? You can come in here. When did you send it? Great. You sent it September 4th, the 5th, too. And I look at that. I can search through that. Doesn't really matter in, in my case. Uh, I mean, it's got five faxes. Uh, but for people, Typically, people that want the solution, they have lots and lots of faxes. You know, they're in medical, they're in something else, and that's uh, what's driving the need for a solution like this. So, no, we're coming up on the end of everything. So, I'm going to open it up for questions here in a second, but I want to get into what you guys probably wanted me to start with first which is how do I make money on this, right? Um, so we're all about giving people choice. I mean, they, you see it in all of our products. You see it in our programs, the way we approach stuff. And so starting at the very beginning here, agent versus reseller, what does that mean? Well, it means you can choose how you want uh, to make money on this. Um, as an agent, you're going to get a check from us. So if we bill your customer 100 bucks a month, Depending on which partner program you're in, I'm just going to use bronze uh, so I can keep things easy. We'll send you a check for 20 bucks. You don't have to bill the customer. You don't have to do anything. You just need to uh, also say go to the bank. Do people still do that? Go to the bank, cash a check. Um, most likely, you're going to op open up the app on your phone and you're going to scan in uh scan in your check and then you're gonna go spend it on your wife or children or whatever uh, now the reseller model is different instead of giving you a check we take all these numbers we talked about back here so let's say 24.99 and we're going to discount that 20 percent so you're going to go ahead and you're going to log in uh, to sipstation.com with your login uh, credentials, and instead of seeing $24.99, you're going to see, I don't know the math. I, don't, I, <laughs> I should. It's something, it's like 19 something. Um, that's what you're going to see. And we're going to charge you and your credit card monthly that discounted amount, and it's then up to you to charge your customer uh, that difference. Um, and it needs to be that difference based on $24.99 because we're also charging you taxes based on $24.99. Um, and the government uh, 
wants to get all of their taxes. So if you were to charge 30 bucks a month for that, same thing we're paying taxes on 24.99 for, you can run into some issues there. Um, when I talk about a commitment of 6K per year, uh, that's on all of our products. So it's not, not 6K, I mean, you certainly can do 6K in substation or fax station or one of our other services, um, but that's also gonna be on hardware as well and software and just anything manufactured by Sangoma. Um, so if you sell one phone system with some SIP trunks and maybe 20 phones, and buy an appliance too from uh, Don here, uh, you're gonna be at that commitment. And you're gonna get different discounts based on uh, the product as well. Uh, Silver Partner, uh, right now that commitment's 20,000 per year. I would tell people if you do four to six decent sized phone systems a year, you're probably gonna be a Silver Partner. Great, awesome, thank you so much. Um, and as you um, turn that uh, that presentation back over to me, um, I'm going to ask one more question here. And I know you went over this, and we can just talk about it. Do you plan on allowing partners to white label your solution? Um, this is from a question from one of the resellers who's attending. We directly bill our clients for hosted PBX now, but are interested in your solution for analog and fax solutions. So the fa the fax, uh, yes, you can. Uh, the fax is white labeled. Um, we have some uh, very large hosted providers actually uh, where we're powering that for them. Um, the SIP station piece, no, we're never going to white label that. Uh, but then again, I mean, if you were to be using SIP station to power anything, they're never going to know that. Exactly. They're never going to have that login. Exactly. And then the part two that we talked about very briefly at the beginning under the under the cloud spam marketplace uh, is the fact that. Um, another solution from Sangoma is available as a cloud offering, which is the PB Exact on a cloud, which we'll do another uh, webinar on that. That's another little more in-depth product that would take more time. So to keep things kind of moving along, um, we didn't really talk too much about that, but that will be available as well. Um, so, and then, you know, from there, I mean, that's the only question I think we've got right now. So we're going to move on to talk a little bit about um, the next steps, you know, rec what's what we recommend, you know. You talked all about SIPStation, um, you know, the, the features, the bursting, the simplicity, the free trial offer, tons of great things, an awesome solution. And again, I have to reiterate that, you know, the product's been very successful at the full-blown price that we have been advertising for years, um, but the contracts make it even more attractive. So you're offering a superior product, you know, than, than those bargain basement SIP trunks that don't have failover, don't have bursting and those other features. So. A great, it's great to, to see that as a, as a part of your full solution. So to become a partner, um, we're going to follow up after this. We're going to send out everybody who attended and the folks that couldn't make it. Um, the recording is going to be available, so you can go back and review any of this material that you need to. Um, but we're going to help you complete the partner program agreements with us so that you can easily get in to sell um, Sangoma or any other partner that we work with. Um, but we're going to help you with an onboarding game plan uh, with your account rep here who's going to reach out to you after this uh, webinar to become a officially certified Sangoma reseller to, that will maximize your benefits in terms of the money you make when you sell the products. And you'll have access as well to our partner portal that has all the marketing and sales collateral to help you sell a full complete VoIP solution, you know, including SIP station, including hardware or accessories that you may need or networking gear that help you uh, make it, your, your customers network solid and ready for VoIP. So, and we'll support you with those opportunities and help you design them and consult um, Todd's done some great um, demonstrations for our clients along the way um, to make sure that, uh, you know, they're super comfortable with the way things have gone. So I really appreciate you attending again today, like I said, and watch for all those follow-ups from myself and from the other folks here at VoIP Supply, and we'll be reaching out to you very soon. We have a second longer. I don't see any other questions to answer. Um, again, my name is Don. Don at VoIPsupply.com, super easy to ask any questions after, the, after the, the webinar here. So thank you again for attending. And with that, I'm going to close up our webinar. And again, I appreciate you all to come, for coming, uh, and I'll talk to you all very soon.